morning, Kingsley Community. Pastor Colleen Weirman here coming to you with another daily devotion for Thursday, July 15th, 2021. Prevail by Susie Larson. Scripture reading comes from Ruth 1.13 and the devotion is day 47 called When Pain Speaks. Things are far more bitter for me than for you because the Lord himself has raised his fist against me. It's from the book of Ruth, chapter 1, verse 13. Susie writes, Naomi had reason to give, to grieve, to lament, and to even wonder where God was in it all. She'd lost her husband and her two sons. She not only grieved as a widow and as a mother, but as a woman who was now at the mercy of the culture of the day, the elements and the times. Or so she thought. Truth was, she wasn't at anyone's mercy. She was in the mercies of God. She just didn't know it yet. Even though Alma Lech, Naomi's husband, led his family outside the will of God to a land of idol worshipers, God never let Naomi, left Naomi's side. He'd made a plan to redeem her story long before she ever knew she needed one. God's always in the process of bringing redemption to our stories. He knows about every enemy scheme, every unfortunate event, and every mess we find ourselves in. Yes, we need to process our pain. Lament is healing to the soul. But consider carefully the great difference between blaming God and crying out to God. Check your heart today. Your redemption story is already in motion. So we know the story of Naomi and Ruth. That's why the book of Ruth is called Ruth, because that's Naomi's daughter-in-law, who also lost her son, or her husband. So Naomi lost her husband and her two sons, and one of those sons was married to Ruth. And they were in a pagan land. Um, Ruth was a, was Ruth a Mobite? She was an ite of some kind. I think she was. Anyway, so Naomi decides she's going back to her land and back to her God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so Ruth decides she's going with her. She says, no, you need to stay. And Ruth says, no, you're my only family. I'm coming with you. But Ruth's other daughter-in-law decided to stay in the pagan nation. But Naomi and Ruth end up back in the land um, of God's people. And Naomi finds a kinsman redeemer, which is... Uh, Let's see, I think it's a son to a brother of her husband's to take care of her, Boaz. And then we know that Ruth and Boaz um, are both in the line, the messianic line of Jesus. So, there you go. So read Ruth 1, 1 through 13. Ask the Lord if you have any unresolved grief hidden in your soul. Search your heart. Have you allowed hardness to settle in because of the length or intensity of the battle? Ask God to soften, restore, and heal you. So if you want to look at any lamenting psalms, um, 86, 82, um, a lot of them are written by David, and they those two aren't. But a lot of them are written by David, and they are lamenting psalms about how people are out to get him, about how he lost loved ones, how he lost his child. And um, he's angry at God, but he laments about the situation. He doesn't... You know, and he he's even upset with God that God allowed this to happen, and that's okay. But in every lamenting psalm, you will find that the psalmist comes back to God in the end, because when there's nothing left, there's God always. So let's pray. Precious Jesus, with open hands and a humble heart, I ask you to redeem me from the things I've suffered. Help me sort through my losses in a way that draws me closer to you and heals me from the inside out. Amen. So if you have um, unresolved guilt, I know a lot of people do, over the loss of a loved one, they should have been there, they should have helped them, they shouldn't have taken the car, they shouldn't have left and been home for them, they, you know, whatever it is, take that to God and ask God to soften your heart towards it. And you can tell God, I'm sad. And yes, grief is part of it all, but guilt is not. Um, the, gr the guilt we have over the loss of a loved one because we think we should have, could have done something. is not good God guilt. That is from evil. So we want to bring our guilt and our pain and our anger even to God and lament, which means to complain, which means to lift up your complaint to God and then um, let God restore you, reheal you, and redeem the situation. Now your grief is, grief is still going to continue, but the guilt will ease up. And you will miss your loved one, but you have assurance and hope and faith that you will see them again. 
So Naomi lost everything, her husband, her two sons. Ruth lost her husband, which was one of Naomi's sons. Yet together they trusted God, went back to the land of the Israelites, and was there blessed, provided for, and Ruth and Boaz actually were in the line of the messianic the messianic line, which means um, they were part of the lineage of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. So God not only restores and redeems our guilt into um, redeemed love for him. And um, so God doesn't want you to spend your time in guilt. He wants you to grieve. That's the normal process when we lose loved ones. But he wants you to rely on him. So don't keep beating yourself up. Go to God. Complain to him. Let him know you're not happy with the situation. You know, tell him you don't know why this happened. How could it happen? Why did you allow it to happen? And all of that lamenting. Make your complaint known to God. And then wait for God to restore you. And it'll happen within that prayer. And if you don't know how to pray it, read the Psalms. Just Google lamenting Psalms. And those will come up. And read them. And pray them. And God will help you through whatever you're going through today. So if you have unresolved guilt, and it could be over a situation, or maybe you didn't say goodbye to your mother before they died, or whatever, you had a grudge, you know, or an argument before they passed, go ahead and lament to God. And then feel that forgiveness come, and feel that peace come. So I hope you have a good day. I know it's raining again. I don't know if we need so much rain, but <laughs> here it is raining again. Every Thursday, we're supposed to do yoga outside. We haven't been to yoga in three weeks because it's been raining every Thursday. So I guess no exercising for me today. I'm not too sad about that. Anyway, you have a good day, and I will see you um, Sunday if you want to join me in person at 9 a.m. We only have one service for the summer, 9 a.m. in person and always live on our Facebook page right here. And I'm going to continue the sermon series on the apostles, and we're going to be talking about the apostle um, Jude Thaddeus also known as Judas. I know, I know. His name is Judas in um, Aramaic and Jude in English. That's why they transposed his name to Jude. And um, But his nickname was Thaddeus. All the same dude, all the same guy. And um, we're going to look at um, Matthew, the calling of Matthew, the tax collector. And the theme is God is the one who calls the lost causes. So if you think you're a lost cause today, Matthew thought that. He was an outcast. He was a tax collector. He was a traitor to his people, to the very people in his community. And um, St. Jude, or St. Thaddeus, Jude Thaddeus, was known by the Catholics as the patron saint of desperate situations and lost causes. So I'm going to clue you in on to what, why they call him the patron saint of lost causes. Pretty kind of cool story. So join me this Sunday at 9 a.m. as we continue walking through the sermon series, The Apostles of Baker's Dozen. And as we see their lives and know their history, God takes many a sinner and turns them into something amazing, new creations for his kingdom. So we'll see you Sunday, 9 a.m. Bye-bye.